The absolute last thing that you want to have happen when launching your online store is to realize that you've made a massive mistake with either your inventory, your finances, or your marketing. So today I want to give you some quick reminders about all of the stuff that you should do before you launch your online store or drop that major update. And a big thank you to Elevate.Store for sponsoring this video. They are an amazing resource for artists and I am so happy they're supporting the channel. Also, last thing before we actually get to the content, make sure that you watch this one all the way to the end because the last thing that I talk about is arguably the most important and you're really going to want to hear it. Okay, let's get into the video. The first thing that I need you to do before launching your online store is to set realistic goals. In the past, I have been what you might call overly optimistic about the number of things I'm going to sell, the money that I'm going to make, or the orders that I'm going to get, and it has led me to make some really poor financial choices. Luckily, nothing that I couldn't have come back from, but still, I would have rather those hadn't happened. So when planning the launch of your store or a major update, make sure that you are being realistic, even honestly fairly conservative, about the number of products that you're going to sell or the orders that you are going to have. In my opinion, Opinion, it is far better to sell out than be left with a ton of inventory that no one is going to buy that will just sit and gather dust in your apartment. I have had some inventory that has stuck around with me that I haven't sold from previous updates for years. I have a couple of like print and sticker designs that I don't think I'm ever going to offer again, but I have like I think over like 25 of each of them still and I, I have to give them away to like friends and family now because I just made poor choices when it came to the amount of orders that I was going to get and it was a really bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. I should have, I don't know, maybe taken pre-orders or just kept things really limited and now I've spent money that I can really can never get back as a result. The second thing that you need to do is to figure out what people actually like. Do a little bit of market research. This is time so incredibly well spent. And take a look at the other artists in your niche, the people that work in similar styles, subject matter, maybe have similar audience sizes to you, similar engagement levels to where you're at, and just see what they sell. Try to figure out what their best selling products are, what people like the most from them, and kind of plan accordingly. I think it is far better to take a look at what works and have your approach really grounded in some data and some cold hard facts. Maybe you don't have to do that with every single product launch, but I think for your first couple, it's good to be a little bit hesitant, a little bit conservative about this stuff and just make sure that your instincts are rock solid before you take a big leap. Also consider polling your audience, see like what their favorite works of art are, what kind of products they'd be interested in seeing from you and what they buy from other artists. If you think that maybe their polling answers aren't super accurate to their actual wants and desires, take a look at instead your engagement levels on your most popular posts. See what kind of art is in those most popular posts that you have and try and kind of make decisions that way because I'm willing to bet that the art that is in your most popular posts is going to sell way better than the art in your least popular ones. That is my gut reaction there. That's my instinct. Maybe let me know down in the comments if it actually is true. The third thing that you need to do before launching, maybe this is honestly one of the really most important ones, especially if you don't come from a lot of money, is to minimize your financial risk. I get it. You want this career to succeed. You want your shop to be an absolute hit the first time, but that is probably not going to happen, right? We said that we were gonna set realistic goals with each other, right? This means that we kind of have to expect that things aren't going to go according to our most ideal scenario. I think you should err on the side of less inventory if this is your first time or if you are launching something new. You don't wanna saddle yourself with a bunch of stuff that isn't gonna sell and you should be really conservative about the number of sales that you expect. If that's not your jam, if you're like, man, I really don't want to expect failure or expect that I'm going to underperform, that's totally fine. Then take in pre-orders instead. Don't order inventory yet. 
put out the orders, like have people purchase a thing or a spot to get a thing before you've even ordered the inventory. Make sure that your, you know, your design is solid, the color proofs are good, but have people place pre-orders maybe a couple weeks before your shop update so that you have a better idea of demand. If you can convert really well for these pre-orders, then that's amazing. Maybe double the amount of inventory that you're getting for people that didn't put in pre-orders but still want the thing. There are other ways to assess demand and minimize your financial risk other than expecting failure, but it's going to be a little bit more work for you. Keeping expenses low when you are just starting out is so, so important to being able to stay in business. Over 30% of businesses shut down in their first year due to lack of funds. And that is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Elevate.store. Elevate.store is a free deals website for entrepreneurs that provides major discounts when starting and growing your business. They offer major discounts that can save you up to $1,600, you heard that right, on essential tools like QuickBooks, Mercury Bank, Canva, and ShipStation, all key to launching an online store. Elevate.store is completely free to use. There is no catch. You don't need to enter in your credit card info. All you need to do is to sign up with your email and you'll get access to the discounts right away. But the best part is, if you use a .store domain, the discounts on Elevate.store go up to $2,500. So visit Elevate.store to start saving right now. Number four is to make sure that you are set up to actually make a profit from your prices. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's in the water. I don't know if we all just like need a big hug or something, but way too many artists and creatives seriously undersell themselves when pricing their products and their art and it is absolutely a major tragedy. Because here's the thing, I think you deserve to not just make a profit, but make a comfortable, healthy living from your work. I think you deserve that. And if you're pricing yourself so low that you're not even making minimum wage, you need to raise your prices. If your audience won't pay for your products at the prices that you have to offer them, then you need to find a new audience. It's not right for you to suffer for the sake of like quote unquote affordability. That's not right. You deserve to be paid what you are worth. So please make sure that you are at the very least covering expenses with the prices that you sell your products at. Ideally, once you figure out what your expenses are, I think that you should double or triple that to get your final price. I know that tripling sounds kind of scary. That makes you nervous. You're on the edge of your seat just thinking about it. You're like, oh God, what if I don't sell anything? But listen, there is so much invisible work that goes into running an online store. From designing your website, getting all of like the messy stuff figured out when it comes to the legal issues, whatever, packaging your orders, like putting the care and the love that you do into your designs, all of that deserves to be paid labor. Yes, this is your dream job. Yes, you love doing this. Does that mean that you do not deserve to be compensated fairly for your time? No, and that means that you need to set prices accordingly. Don't feel bad for this. Sometimes your work is not going to be affordable for some people and that's okay. That just means that you can maybe offer something else for them or whatever. I also don't think that art necessarily has to be affordable. I think that's a really big burden to put on people. The fifth thing that you need to figure out before launching your online store is to get all of the boring stuff figured out. There are two things that you need to do just to keep yourself safe and make sure that you are all good to go legally with your business. And the first one is to open up a PO box. You need a professional address for your business. You don't want to inadvertently dox yourself to your customers by revealing your home address on the return label. That is what some might call um, an L, a bad move. Please don't do that. That's unsafe. There are so many freaks and random people on the internet. If you have an audience online, especially, you need to consider your privacy when selling online. You need to keep yourself safe. Please do not put yourself in harm's way because you didn't want to fill out a form. Don't do that. If you don't want to fill out the forms for a government PO box that is 
provided to you by USPS, then what you can do instead is get this thing called a virtual PO box or a virtual mailbox. They will like scan or photograph letter mail for you, possibly even forward your mail to your actual address all while keeping that private. And so you have a professional return address that is not your home address that you can put on official documents and things. I think this is pretty important. Please do this. The second thing that you definitely want to do here with regards to the boring legal stuff is to make sure that you are all set to collect and remit sales tax for wherever you live. If you are selling digital products, there is this tool called Lemon Squeezy that I think is great. They collect and remit sales tax for you, but it is just for digital products. If you are using physical products, I recommend a tool called Tax Jar. They get all of that stuff squared away for you. It's amazing. I would highly recommend it. Saves you a big headache. And if you are still overwhelmed with this, if you truly have no idea where to start, there are people that you can call probably at your local Department of Commerce to ask questions about this. There are civil servants, government employees that sit by the phones all day waiting to answer your questions. That is what they are paid for. Your taxes pay for their salaries. They are there to help you. They want you to pay your taxes. They want to support you. They want to demystify this whole process. Probably they are not going to be rude and terrible to you. Personally, I always have like this burst of anxiety when I'm about to make a phone call to like some government office and it's like never as much of a big deal as I think it is and it's like always fine. So probably you're going to be fine. <laughs> probably it's going to be okay. You don't need to be as anxious as I am because there's probably not a good reason for it. The sixth thing that you need to do is to write out your shop policies and FAQ page. The last thing that you want is to have your inbox inundated with the same dozen questions over and over again about your shipping times, your package tracking information, your return policies, your refund policies, you will save yourself so much effort, so much effort by writing this out and keeping it in an easily accessible place for your customers. The footer of your website is a good place to have all of this stuff, like a little link to a separate page that's not you know, on your main navigation, but at the bottom of your footer, maybe have links to it on your product description pages or whatever, but make it easy to spot, write everything out, be as detailed as you can, and nip all of those many, many emails in the butt. Because if you don't, you're gonna regret it. I waited too long to do this and I had so many emails in my inbox. It was like, I have war flashbacks is what I'm saying. I need therapy. Um, but yeah, you can just avoid all of that and that trauma by not making that mistake and writing everything out. Your customers will thank you and your inbox will thank you. And also your, your soul will probably thank you as well. Last but not least, you need to have a marketing plan. The day that you launch your online store or drop your major update should not be the first time that your audience is hearing about it. Please don't do that to yourself. If you wait till the very last second to start marketing your store update, you're not gonna get very many orders. People aren't gonna know about it. You need to ideally have a comprehensive marketing plan that starts like marketing your stuff weeks, maybe not plural weeks if you don't want to, but at least one week before it goes live. By marketing your stuff early, by being consistent with it, you will get more orders early on, which is what you want in an ideal world. The last thing that you want is to launch that big update or launch your store for the first time, realize that you didn't do that great of a job at marketing and then you're disappointed in yourself and you think that you're a failure and you're upset and you're f you feel guilty and sad. There is no shame in marketing yourself. If you feel confident about your work, if you feel proud of it, then you should want to talk about it and you should want to share it with the world. And you do that by writing email newsletters, posting your Instagram stories, making Instagram posts, reels, TikToks, YouTube videos, whatever you need to do. Market your work, market this online store and your products. You will thank yourself later and it will be a little bit uncomfortable if you're not used to doing this at first, but it is really, again, time well spent. And I do just wanna put this out there very briefly that if you are working on designing marketing materials, the sponsor of this video, Elevate.Store, <laughs> they do offer a 45 day free trial of Canva Pro. So that is a thing to think about as well. I mean, yeah, ideally you would have a very comprehensive marketing plan. You would plan 
plan things out weeks in advance. You would have ideas for super engaging creative content on things like your YouTube community tab, your Instagram stories, your email list, your TikToks, your reels, like everything that you're doing online socially. You should you should advertise your store on all of your socials that you're using for your business, everything. And listen, I know that people often really hate marketing. They think that it's manipulative or unethical or whatever. And I think that there's a way to do it right. It's not unethical for you to share your work and you're not bothering people by talking about your work. They signed up for that by following you, subscribing to your email newsletter, whatever. It's You're trying to make an honest living and there is no shame in that. If I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in learning more about how to market your work without social media, maybe, then consider watching the video on the screen right now. It is all about email newsletters. I know, kind of zesty, but I think they're worth it. I think every artist should have one. So that is it for me. I hope to see you guys in the next one. And thank you again to Elevate Outstore for sponsoring this video. Bye, guys.